So I recently did a video on a $100 iPhone 7 clone and a lot of you guys seem to be interested. But a downfall with the clone is they don't perform anything close to the real thing. They get pretty slow and slaggy and if things do go wrong you have no support. So here's the original iPhone for $100. This is the iPhone 5S and as of now you can get this for about $100. So how does the iPhone 5S stand in 2017? Let's find out. Let's start with design. This phone has one of the best designs out there. In fact, this design was so popular, Apple relaunched this phone as iPhone SE last year. The chassis is made out of metal, full aluminium body, with Gorilla Glass front. And honestly, it's still one of the best phones you can get for one hand use. It fits perfectly in your hand and don't fall for the small size factor. This phone is packed with a lot of features and specs. Holding it in hand is pretty impressive. It feels premium and is lightweight at 112 grams with overall dimensions of 123 by 58. It has a 4 inch screen which is pretty small compared to big smartphones of today. But if you are comfortable with small screen size, this phone has a lot to offer. Screen resolution is 640 by 1136. Multi-touch display with Gorilla Glass. It's running on Apple's A7 chip which is a couple years old but it still performs fairly well. In fact, the latest Apple TV is still running on an A8 processor. The iPhone 5S was also the first iPhone to have a 64-bit operating system. And even till date, all latest phones like the iPhone 7 Plus are still running on a 64-bit system. Also, this phone is still supported by Apple which means you can stay updated to the latest firmware. And using this phone, you should still be able to upgrade to iOS 11 whenever that comes out. Now let's try to compare it to the latest flagship from Apple, the iPhone 7 Plus. And during a Geekbench test, the results don't surprise me. The iPhone 7 Plus performs better, but compared to what you're paying, $100 versus $900. And the iPhone 5S all of a sudden looks like a better deal. And these are just numbers, doing real life comparison, the iPhone 5S is only a few seconds behind. And honestly, using this phone by itself, it doesn't seem slow at all. It's definitely still great performance in 2017. We do only get 1GB of RAM, which isn't bad, but Apple could have done better, even when this phone was launched. And if you're a heavy user like me, I would recommend you restart this phone once in a while and that should bring back the performance. Another tip, if you want to clear your RAM, hold the power button until this screen pops up and then hold the home button and continue to hold it for about 5 seconds. And after about 5 seconds, the screen should go back to normal and that should clear your RAM. Overall performance wise, I'm not disappointed. It's a great phone and still has a lot of power in 2017. The iPhone 5S was also the first iPhone to offer fingerprint scanner which was a pretty big deal back in the day. And it was definitely a huge selling point with more than 10 million units sold. Which also brings us to our next point, repairability. This phone being so popular, if things do go wrong, you can easily find parts and repair it yourself or get a repair for fairly cheap. Another good thing, chances of you finding a good deal for a used model still in good condition is fairly well. In fact, I got this unit for only $90, it's factory unlocked and still in great condition. Now let's talk about camera, this phone has an 8 megapixel back camera with f2.2, which is capable of shooting full HD 1080p at 30 frames per second. And we also have slow motion at 120 frames per second. We also have a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera with f2.4. And in the last few years, cameras have definitely received an upgrade. But this phone is still capable of taking really good pictures and videos. But just to compare things, this is the quality difference from the iPhone 7 Plus and the iPhone 5S. Again, compare that with the price, $900 versus $100. This phone does a great job for most part, and if you're taking pictures to upload them on Instagram or Snapchat, they will end up compressing your pictures and videos anyways. And if you are on Snapchat or Instagram, make sure you follow the Royal Tech for behind the scenes and more. Anyways, let's talk about performance once again from a different perspective. Playing games like Real Racing 3 works surprisingly well. Overall, I'm getting good frame rates and the game works pretty smooth. I mean, you can play high graphic games on a $100 smartphone perfectly fine, what else can I say? Now, even though high graphic games work fine, they do eat a lot of battery. And that's our next point. Battery life, this is something that might disappoint a little. This phone has a battery of 1570mAh, which is half of what you can get in an Android. But keep in mind, Apple has really well packed and optimized hardware and software. So for most part, optimization can make up for the small battery. Also, this phone is overall smaller than other phones that pack a much bigger battery. 
But even with what we have as of now, Apple claims about 10 hours of battery use. But this phone being used, you won't get anywhere close to that number. I got somewhere around 4 hours on screen but this is something that could totally depend on how old your phone is and how much it's been used. If battery is a major problem, you can get a new battery which can be installed yourself and it's fairly easy. But for average, you should get somewhere around 4 hours of battery life. So if you are a heavy user like me, something to keep in mind. Wrapping things up, this phone is running on Apple A7 64-bit processor. Available in 16, 32 and 64 GB. With 1 GB of RAM, a 8 megapixel back camera that can record 1080p with 30 frames per second, first generation touch ID, dual tone flash and a 1570mAh battery, all for $100, which in my opinion is a pretty good deal. This phone is great if you're on a tight budget or maybe you want a second phone and don't want to spend too much for that. It's even great if you want to use it as an iPod and that way you have a choice to use it as a phone whenever you want, just pop in a SIM card and you're ready to go. You can still use this phone with an Apple Watch and has a bonus, it has a classic headphone jack built in. Although it doesn't have Apple Pay which shouldn't really be a big deal but if you're someone like me and really want Apple Pay you can add that functionality with an Apple Watch. Overall this phone is smaller than other flagships out there but a lot of people are just fine with a 4 inch display. And if you are you can save a lot of money and get something like this and still have decent performance in 2017. And yeah guys that would do it for this video, let me know what you think about the iPhone 5s in 2017. If you like this video let me know in a comment below and feel free to share with your friends and as always thanks for watching.